pick one. Scripture in Genesis where where uh, Joseph had to attend to Pharaoh. You know, Scripture records that there was some change of clothes that happened because. Okay, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Can we? I just want to. I I I want to read that out to us before uh, Mam and Ken will come up and then. Uh, Take us on the next presentation. Ah, come on, dog. What's happening? Okay. I'm trying to open my Bible on my. Genesis 41. 41 14. Okay. Okay. So, I will read from here. So scripture says that then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of a dungeon. But Joseph, scripture records first. I'm reading the Amplified Version. Okay, this is KJV. Uh, but I like how, how Amplified puts it. It said first, first, this was what he did. Now it says he shaved himself. He changed his raiment, changed his clothes. He made himself presentable. Then he came into Pharaoh's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it tells us that personal hygiene is also part of the package of eternal life. Permit me. Let me say it like that. <laughs> it's part of a package. So um, uh, it's important that when you're standing before kings, when you're standing before whoever self, whoever it is, it's important that you know you are, you, uh, you carry yourself, right? You, you're, you're presentable. You're not just dressed shabbily or you're, you don't come hastily into um, a king's presence or to a CEO's presence. You want to look all good and all sharp and all well put together. So uh, taking us through that this morning is um, Ma'am and Kim. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as she steps up. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be talking on grooming and on personal hygiene. And it's not just only for workers. It's also for, it's our day-to-day, -day, you know, how we live, how we interact with people. Um, just a quick one. How many people are actually working here? Just, you can just, let me just, so I, okay. All right, so that just gives me, all right, so please, um, next slide, what is grooming? So I said it's the process of making yourself neat and attractive. Um, have you heard the slogan that they say, um, you, oh, sorry, it takes you only five minutes, it takes five minutes to make an impression. That means if, Someone, when you meet a stranger for a first time, you're not God. You don't know what the person, yes, the person may have good intentions, but really what you see is what you take in. And you never have a second chance to make a first impression. And that's the way it is. I think it's just the way God has designed man. So what you see is really how you get. So that's why they tell you dress as must be addressed. And um, so in that, when we're talking about grooming, it talks about everything. <laughs> So it talks, <laughs> I'm shaking here, mama. <laughs> so um, we're talking about everything from your skin, your hair, your nails, your feet, you know, your dressing, your comportment, you know, how we, because you're either on the job or you're trying to get a job, you know, you might be a student, but it's everything about you. So please, next slide. So just join me and just listen. So why do we have to pay particular attention about our appearance because it, it's, it comes across as your professionalism, a level of sophistication, your intelligence, and how credible you are. Because people begin to, I know that yes, you know, beyond just taking in your clothes, there are also the verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Sorry, I'm talking about like body language, you know, how you talk, you know, how you're able to comport yourself. People look at that, you know, and they can make their own judgments and make their own and. Um, um, analysis about you. So please, next slide. So I talked about first impression. So you form and remember your first impressions of others in just a few seconds. It's the same thing when you go to a company or you go to an eatery. You know, what you take in, first of all, you're already looking at the ambience and you're like, you've already made your perception whether you see the food or not. Sometimes even how they serve you the food without even tasting it. You've seen the food, you've made up your mind, this is not good. Why? Because that's just the way we are. We look at things and we can analyze that way. So that means that if that is very critical, so at every point in time you want to make sure that you're giving a good impression about yourself. 
Okay, please, next slide. So, we are going now. So, for males, what do we talk about for, like, our hair? So, you're a guy, you're a man. So, you shouldn't keep, like, long hair. Shouldn't fall across your ears, your eyebrows, or even touch the back of your collar. Your hair should not look rough. Oil them properly. We have brothers here that are not married. You know, our sisters, too, they also look. You know, you want to. Yes, am I not talking? Sisters, am I not talking? So, <laughs> this is also a tenor line. <laughs> so, your hair should not look rough. Oil them properly, please. And then shave. Shave regularly to look your best. If you have a beard or a mustache, then make sure it's trimmed neatly. It's not a put off. You know, you want to look good. So I don't see why we should have rough hair, you know, untidy hair. It's a no-no. Okay, so please, next slide. <laughs> so for females, now we have the adage, everybody, thank God now for, uh, now people are going natural, so we have lots of wigs. You don't even know what is the real one. <laughs> So please, so I had this joke. Sorry, I work with, I'm in a HR profession. So, um, <laughs> and then there's the group I belong to. So we're talking about um, grooming, really, and you know how people, what puts people off in the course of interviews. And the HR professional was talking about, where's the head of HR? And he said that he actually sat at an interview and a lady came in and her hair was so untidy. Apart from that, the stench was horrible. He said it was so bad that the ND even had to shut that interview. And we were like, wow. He said it was horrible. It was a big disgrace. So, you know, so he threw the question open and just said, how do you handle such? And uh, so we see all that, you know, at interviews. And we're just saying for ladies, you have braids, you have wigs. Please clean them. I, I do something with my children because uh, like my daughter, Eliana, she braids her hair. I don't really like to braid. But when I braid, we have this, we want to smell. So I'm like, hmm, come, let me smell it. If it's not clean, Debbie, my little daughter, she came. She said, Mommy, her hair is itchy. And I took spirits. That's a little girl that it's because she's athletic. So she, I, because of that, she sweats a lot on her scalp. And because of that, we do her hair every, every two weeks. Because I just believe, you know, you have to look good. You have to, it's not a matter of uh, um, anything. But the hair has to be washed. So I'm just saying, I've started, my children are already used to this. So we come and even, Mommy, your hair, you know, I'm... Um, Oh, I have to take spray. And then you have spray. You can use the hair spray. You can use the hair polish. And then if you do your hair, you must always make sure that you look tidy. You know, you see ladies, um, sometimes even in the workplace, they come in and for interviews. Because when you go for interviews, you sit across the panel. The first thing they're looking at is your outfit. They're looking at your hair. They're looking at your makeup. They're looking at your nails. And they're making their own inference about you. So very, very critical. Please, ladies, let's, let's take note of that. And then for workplace, please, um, unsightly colors. You can't use green. You can't use burgundy. So if, for example, you're called to an interview, and I know you probably like colors, just take that into um, cognizance. Please, next slide. Are we flowing? So nails. So this is not just only for ladies, for men too. Um, long nails. A no, no. Please, if you, if you like it for a guy, it is a no, no. It is very, 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 it's, it's a put off. And it doesn't show, um, it doesn't show someone that is neat or someone that is clean. So, uh, and then for ladies, if you don't like to paint your nails, please, you can keep them well manicured. Shouldn't look dirty. You should have like a little brush. Those are basic things we can do. Little brush, you know, and then you... You know, you can wash it regularly. And then for ladies that fix, if you fix nails, you, know, you shouldn't leave your nails chipped or cracked, you know, unsightly. Um, you're going for an interview, and I see that. Maybe they probably call, and you just see ladies, probably the nails are ready. The call, and you're wondering, oh, my God, what's happening? And then the toenails, you know, are all chipped off. You, because those are the things that people, people uh, make their own judgment. And not just only interviews, even in your workplace. So please, if you know your nails, your color is chipped off, you can have little, I do that, if I can't go to, I have little bland colors, you know, like probably red, and you can quickly 
you know, or then you just clean up the whole thing. You shouldn't be caught that way because you won't have any time to start explaining to anybody. People just make their own judgments that you're just a very untidy person. Please, next slide. So now, hmm, say, say, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Please get in the shower. I'm going to really dwell on this. And this is because of our kind of environment. Now, the sun is back. Rainy season is over. So, you know, in rainy season, you don't, smell too, you don't smell too many things. But now, the sun is back. You have to take particular attention with how you smell. And um, I'm going to be talking about myself. I always use myself, my family. So, this is the way I was brought up. And my mom had this, this thing of telling you, you know what? Put your nose in. And smell yourself. Please, can you do that? What you smell is how you smell out. <laughs> so if you like what you smell, thank yes. Please go to the next slide. You will see what I put. So I talked about shaving regularly your armpits. So I uh, I have maybe I uh, <laughs> so I uh, I've, I've had um. I have, I've met somebody, and I, I just talked to you about this. And I've met somebody, and she was talking to me how the body order almost like kind of like ruined her marriage. And she said it, she didn't even realize how bad it was till the husband's um, siblings or, you know, started talking. And they actually called the husband and said, you have to do something. Your wife smells. That was a very, very, and she just said nobody told her. Nobody told her when she was growing up. Nobody told her, even her friends. So that's what I said. Sometimes it's probably a sensitive topic. Maybe again, because sometimes you tell some people and the kind of, you know, reaction you get. And she just said no, but she liked the way that, you know, her husband actually told her. And so she actually went to meet a dermatologist. She also found that her house was not just, you know, she said it was her kind of skin. She, uh, she, she secretes a lot of oil when she sweats. So the, the oil kind of leaves this kind of, you know, smell with it. So what she does is that, she, and she tackles it so much. So she says, in my bag, there's a perfume, there's roll-on. She says, anywhere I go to, before I come out of the car, I'm rubbing it, you know, I'm spraying it. And she's not only that, she said now she's become more conscious about her children because she doesn't want that. She talked about the kind of, you know, what it does to you, to know that people around you are probably having that impression about you. Not only even with, with armpits or this thing. Some people, their mouth smells. Yeah. It's natural. You say it's natural. <laughs> well, maybe again, sometimes some of the things we eat, if you love garlic, if you love garlic or you eat, <laughs> you know, because those things, they actually come out as secretions, you know, from the body. So it leaves. And that's why sometimes if you see these Chinese people, if you stay near them or yeah. Indians, you see that, yeah, because of the kind of things that they eat. So now what can you do about that? So you have a mouth freshener. And then there's something which I also learned where I used to work. And the lady told me, she said, in came, she said, because of her kind of work, she says, when she eats, she has a toothbrush in her bag. She goes to brush for every meal. She says, in the office, she goes to brush. And this was like a top lady in a bank. And I heard that, I was like, wow. So now, what do you do? You've probably gone for lunch and you've eaten Eddie Kaiko or you've eaten, uh, you know, Afa, you know, all those things there. And you know, sometimes you just come, hmm, <laughs> and you have one meeting and then maybe you have to talk to your boss and you don't want people when they come around you, they are like, hmm, okay. Oh. <laughs> you don't want that, but you know, we said you're in the workplace, you might be somebody who is so competent, who is so good, you know, but. People can't just stand being around you. When they come, immediately you leave. They have a, bring out the air freshener who, and, you know, open up the windows. So that tells us something. We should be constantly checking ourselves. We have to. We sweat. But, you know, we can control it. So armpits, please shave. If you can't give a that about that. And I talked about if your shoes smell... We can get shoe powder, uh, that was it called, uh, uh, foot powder. You know, try to air your shoes, clean them. It's very, it's not really nice when, when you take off your shoes and you notice, you know, sometimes it comes out very, very bad. Please, next slide. So dress. So how do we dress to the corporate world? So um, we're just talking about for men, solid colors, preferably white shirts and um, long sleeve tucked in, button all the way, always wear an undershirt. So we talked about dark colors to match attire, no white socks, no sneakers. So shine your shoes, no scuff marks, 
it's not good. Even if you if you feel that your shoes are looking old and worn out, or you know, Reg, you can take them to a shoemaker, but you know, make sure it's always it's always neat. And same thing too to ladies. So we're talking about makeup. Makeup very very important. If you're not someone who knows how to make up, at least just know the basic things. Sometimes make up. I mean, the office, and you're wondering. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm serious. So now, you know, there's a lot of things you can get on the internet. YouTube teaches you how to do simple makeup. But then it's either you don't want to do the makeup, but if you must do, look pleasant, you know. Don't have clash of colors. You know, how you pick them matters. And your kind of clothes, how you're able to, like, assemble them, you know, matching. So you're not, you know, you're not, people come here and you're wondering, did they mirror, mirror on the wall? <laughs> So I'm not talking, basic, I'm just telling you basically what really happens. And I'm, so I believe that we can learn from that. So, um, and then I've talked about your, your, our nails. And, um, okay, so please, next slide. So for men, what are the colors? So personal grooming business, you have dark colors, dark navy, charcoal, dark gray, medium gray. Next slide, please. So I just stay on this. So we say for do... When your, your bottom of tie should just cover your belt buckle. This tie is way too long. This is way too short. So. <laughs> ah, okay, Pastor. <laughs> Google told me this. So. <laughs> the traditional. Uh -huh. All right, please. Next slide. <laughs> So, and then we're talking that when you have to, for, for at least for office, you should have good quality silk tie in solid colors or subtle color with patterns or subtle color. Sorry, no disrespect to the uh, Hausa tribe, but I think the Hausa folks are the ones that sell those. Uh, <laughs> don't go and buy them types. So I think we call it love in that in uh, Jumai, no respect. No respect, Jumai. No respect, no respect. No mind me. It's just what I sing over time. You know, and then they come with bottles. Was that what they use for corpse? Well, you know, they, they call this, they, start, they call it all manner of names. The thing, they get one kind. You know, it can be very strong and very near pungent. Pungent, pungent odor that you're like, and then the guy is shaking, you're like, nah, man. I don't, I don't want to be shaking them hands, man. You know, don't go and buy those ones. So, find find Nivea, find uh, which other ones they sure. Find uh, smart collects. Okay, Pastor Monica is going the traditional way. <laughs> you know, a healthier option. Yeah, we know, we know. Uh, Mamun Kem saying smart collections. They're like the imitations of um of them. Uh, they're very expensive. So it's, it's very important. But please, just don't, just don't go the laughing that way. Don't go that way. Nah, man. Nah. All right. So um, we're a bit pressed for time. Quickly, we will talk about um, our website. And um, Chesson and Wale will take us through that. And right after them, we'll have the very last talk for the day. Pastor will be doing that. But um, right now, let's just welcome Chesson and Wale. Put our hands together for them, please. Okay, one more thing. There will be questions and answers. Um, there will be questions. So if you have any question, something you want, you want to ask, please put it down. And um, after pastors uh, talk, we will quickly run through them. Give us clarity. Wale, that's all. Can we get one of you come in front? Praise God. Ah, I'm shy. Oh. <laughs> Let me wait for... Oh. Okay, so basically we were able to revamp um, the website and um, a lot of content there now. So, waiting for... How far? Laptop. Okay, um... Sorry, just give me one minute.
Can I be a skip? Okay, scroll down, please. Yeah, go down, go down, go down. Okay, okay. So we have the word for the day that comes up every day. Um, we also have um, a banner we, we designed for that. So we post it on the family group and people can share. We also have it here. Then we have the prophecy, paid confession of the week and weekly teaching. Um, they are all posts that are here too. So you can come here, read, and then you can share. We post the link on the family page as well. Then we have the blog. Okay, so this is the weekly teaching. So this is like a post that's under the weekly teaching. So you can share Facebook, Google, Twitter, LinkedIn, and the email. Um, what else? You have um, the blog as well. You have upcoming events, you add of worship. And then we have some messages we're uploading here. We, we plan to upload um, more. So you can just come here, you can they listen, download, and um, read the excerpts from the message. Here, um, there's testimonies from church members. Go down. Okay, you have the latest blog, so um, we hope to update this one as well. You did mistake there, okay. Amanda's mission statement. No, there's a mistake there, I guess. There's a mistake there, yeah, so we would correct that. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, these are, there are still some things that are still um, missing there. We still want to put a payment portal for, a payment gateway for giving. So, if you want to pay your tithe, your offering, you can do that. Um, but we're still putting some finishing touches to that. So, basically, that's like the overview of what. Oh yes, we Cause my eyes are on the throne. I trust the one who's in complete control. The one who already knows how he's gonna work it according to his purpose. Even the worst situations are sure to turn in my favor. If I keep moving forward, keep moving toward him, God is with me in this moment. And whatever happens, I can handle it. I know my help comes from above. So if fear insists on knocking meet it at the door. Life might give me bad news. Still got a good report. I can handle it. If I fall, if I fail, I'll handle, I'll handle it. Grace will give me what it takes to carry on. With regards to our, our career, with regards to family, with regards to um, our gifting, it's there all. And in other words, in other way, some sometimes we believers would think the Lord the Lord created the earth and created the fullness, but He did not create the world. You get what I'm saying? He didn't create the Bible said the world and the people who dwell in the world. He created ethnox, he created nations, people of different language from different tribes. He is the one. Praise God. That's God. And you don't despise other tribes, other culture. Yeah, of course, everything that, is, that contradicts the word of God, that means that culture was, is already perverted. Praise God. Anything that contradicts the, the values of God's kingdom is perverted. So, culture is of God. God created culture. He created the world. Let me give it, let me bring out the definition so that we not assume it is what it is not. The word, the earth, is taken from the Hebrew word eret. That's E R E T S. E R E T S. Eret. And the word eret simply means planet. I said the earth. It's talking about the earth. The word includes, uh, excuse me, it includes, you know, uh, the sea, uh, 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 land, land, the landscape, it includes mountains, nature, the universe, the universe, nature. That's what the scripture means by the earth. It's talking about the planet, praise God. It's the Lord, God created, he created the territories 
of, of this earth. And not only that, the fullness. The word fullness is taken from the Hebrew word mellow. The word mellow means raw materials, natural resources. Crude was created by God. Waves, wave, electromagnetic waves, molecules, all that, everything contained in the earth created by God that determines its formation, its natural physical formation created by God. Not only that, the one that interests me amazing is what the world, let someone say the world. From that context, from the Hebrew context, what the world is taken from the Hebrew world, Tebel, Tebel, Tebel. The word Tebel means the part of the world, that means the part of the planet that is inhabited and occupied. The aspect inhabited and occupied. The aspect discovered and being explored. So it's actually talking about the systems. It's talking about the sectors. It's talking about the systems. It's talking about the sectors. Praise God. Since I don't have it yet, so I want to make sure I follow. Uh, so it's talking about the systems. It's talking about the sector. It's talking about civilization. It's talking about human development. That's what the world is talking about. God created, not Satan. So I ask, how come the Bible says Satan is the god of this world? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Satan is the god of this world, but the Bible didn't say Satan created this world. Praise God. That means that he's ruling, he's governing. But he never created it. So it's, it's, it's distorted this world. But Satan never created it. And he's doing so illegally. Because it is we that are supposed to govern the world. Praise God. You can as well say Satan governed Eden. The Satan took over, yes. But the point was that who did God put in charge? It was man. Praise God. So, so God, it's amazing to realize God created the world. Now, the definition we give to the world is with regards to social economic system. It's with regard to social economic system. It is global. The world is global. The world, world as, a, as a meeting point of thought, ideas, and expertise is global. Praise God. That's why they could, Shell could move you from Nigeria to America. It's global. You're, you're, you realize that the system with which you're working is still the system with which they work in America. Our mathematics, if you use ed education as an example, they add, mathematics is global. Isn't it? That's it. Two plus two in every way is four. There's no way. It doesn't matter what complication you introduce. The system, the social economic system. Now, when when when, this, when we say social economic system, we do means where social life and economic factors are concerned when they come together to interact, to affect, you know, human outcome of human lives. Praise God. It's the definition and the concept of the world. You know, in, in this sense. Of course, there are many scriptures that talks about God creating the earth, God creating the, the world. In, in uh, Genesis 2-4, the Bible did talk about God, Yahweh, is the maker of heaven and earth. In Jeremiah 23 verse 2, the Bible also still also buttresses that. Now, but one thing that is, that is definitely insightful is the fact that Originally, when God created the earth, so let me. So, one thing we've established is that is we've seen the uh, should I use the word holistic definition of what world system is and the fact that it is God's invention. Now, so somebody may ask a question or may feel, but the world system is actually man's invention. God invented it. God 
allowed man to orchestrate the world system. That is to put it in, in motion. To drive it. To orchestrate and drive it. God. Should, let me not say God this time. It is God. But let me not use the word God. I would say the world system is orchestrated and driven by, by deep thinking. It's orchestrated and driven by deep thinking, innovation, and technology. So that's the reason why man now becomes, you know, uh, relevant to the operation and the running of the world system. If you look at, I mean, men that, you know, that, let me say, that presides over technology, innovation, you know, coming up, that is generation, generating ideologies. We look at example of people like, like Albert Einstein. We look at example of people like Isaac Newton. There's no way you're going to talk about the what the formation or establishment of the world system without talking about those things. About Einstein was was Jew, and and I believe he has relationship with God. If you look at some of his words, Isaac Newton was a solid spiritual entity. Praise God. As a matter of fact, he wrote more about God and about things of the spirit than science. Isaac Newton. Michael Faraday was a pastor. So if you look at the early inventors, they were actually Christians. So we, we have people like Nikola Telsa. Nikola Telsa was, uh, was a Sabian, a Sabian American. He was a Sabian American inventor. He was one that, he was a chemical engineer, uh, electrical engineer, he was a physicist. He was one that came up with, uh, what is it he came up with? He was one that came up with, um, he came up with a significant breakthrough. Praise God. What, what do you call it? No, no, not steel engine. Um, it came up with, yeah, I think it was, yeah, I got it. It was cosmo, it was cosmic radio waves. It, it was one that invented cosmic radio waves. F fantastic man. You know, we have people like um, Thomas Edison, you know, Aristotle, a great philosopher, you know, Plato. We have, uh, you know, Socrates. You know, we have people like uh, Louis Pasteur. Louis, Louis, Louis Pasteur was French. Well, he was uh, a biologist, he was a microbiologist. Um, he uh, discovered vaccination, a microbial, microbial fermentation, Louis Pasteur, you know. Then also we have people like Leonardo da Vinci. Of course, Leonardo da Vinci. They refer to him as uh, Renaissance uh, polymath. He, his work covered science, music, sculpting, you know, uh, what else again? Architecture, engineering. Uh, it covered, uh, you know, anatomy, astrology. It's work covered broad spectrum of human life. You know, uh, we have, of course, James Maxwell. We have Wells again. You know, in the modern age, in the present time, we have Stephen Hawking. You know, uh, of course, we have some other people whose impact I don't consider to be, to be I consider their impact to be extremely destructive on, on the world system. You know, people like... Uh, What's the name? Uh, Darwin. Uh, Charles Darwin, you know, uh, naturalist. He came up with theory of 
evolution. You know, we also have Karl Marx, you know, and, and all that. You know, so we have different people who actually uh, shape the world system. You know, lot, 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 a whole load of human beings that set ideologies in motion that shape the world system. Let me give this a second definition to the world system. The second definition to the world system has got to do with fields of discipline. Praise God. The world system could be considered to be the framework that provides the platform for human engagement in various fields of discipline and life endeavor. And so I'll, I'll say that again. I said the world system could also be considered. Okay, we have some sort of stuff. Where is it? Okay, the world system could be considered as uh, the framework that provides platform, that provides the platform stage podium for human engagement in various fields of discipline, expertise, and life endeavors. Praise God. So uh, what, what that means is that it is keep the, the official to a not a higher length. A very good example is typewriter. You know, without without invention, we don't come into computer technology. And you see how broad the difference between using the typewriting machine and using much more sophisticated system as computer technology. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Thank God for printing press. But you know, information technology is a different world entirely. Awesome. That introduced us to a different aspect of life. You know, that's the reason why when we talk about the world system, the world system is not Satan. The world system is God's invention. And is given to man to manage. Of course, it's, it's not as God created it or God designed it to be anymore. So, if we're going to be very practical, if you don't want to be part of the world, you see, the, the truth is that the world system is what runs every aspect of our human life. How many of you us do online transfer? Let me see your hand if you do online transfer. You transfer funds online. You are worldly. <laughs> Don't want to be part of the world? And you're using the, what do you call, the, what do you call that? Your, your, you know, uh, your smartphone. In fact, the fact that you have a smartphone already made you worldly. Worldly, the smartphone technology is it is a different world. If you if you have parents, maybe of the you know like in their sixties, seventies, or in their sixties, seventies, eighties, even though they are professor, if they don't have the mind of a child, they will be left behind. Well read, I know a whole lot of them. They don't know how to send. In fact, it was in the days when text message was introduced. I knew a professor said, that thing, I will not succumb to it. He didn't know that he has been left behind. So, it, it, it's amazing. It's really, really amazing. So, uh, talk, talk, so, talking about, I've lost, I've lost my... Thank you. So, that, now, we talk, I, I, I was given an example of... Uh, you know, transactions, payments, we do payments, communication. You know, it's amazing. You travel abroad, anywhere in the world, you can always communicate with your friends and families using WhatsApp. It's not going to, you're not going to spend the money. In those days, if you're going to communicate, you're going to spend a lot on international call. But you know, the world has become a, the, the advent of globalization. Now, not globalization as an ideology. I mean, globalization as a system. 
You know, there's a globalization as an ideology that wants to bring the whole world under the same influence and force on us how we should live and force on us how people should be gay and transgender and how abortion should, be, should, should rise to another level. No, not, not in that sense. But in terms of systems that drives technology, that bring, that merges us, the whole, you know, culture, you know, nationhood together, that, that removes the, the uh, what do you call it again? Removes the barrier, removes the, it makes it, makes the world in terms of thought, ideas, in terms of relationships seamless. So the advent of globalization has made the whole world, you know, a village. That your, your office can't run without, you know, the, 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 an effective what system operation. The internet, you know, uh, 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 on Friday, the, you should say, and I did some payments, I mean, purchase on Amazon. You know, I, I use this platform. I use my platform to do some purchase, buy some cameras and camera lens on eBay. The other time, Sister Nikkei, Sister Nikkei is not around. Nikkei Olajide was in the U.S. I made a purchase, sent camera to him, to her, I will tell in America. And she brought it home for me. So I don't have to go to America to buy stuff and, and bring it home. You, you do registration. You can earn a degree. In fact, you can earn a PhD by studying online. World system. And we need to, we need to be at the top of it. We need to be, we need, we need to be, we need to understand how we need to be vast. We need to be knowledgeable. We need to watch news. When you watch news, you see prophecy unfold. Don't only read the Bible, read other books. Develop a mind. Read Time magazines. Read, read Punch newspaper. You can get them online. You are, not, you are not going to go to hell. You need to understand human mind, how people think, what policies f do we apply in our country. You need to, un you need to be vast about your, our environment, the system in which we operate in. We are meant to govern it. You can't be ignorant of it if we are going to govern it. Praise God. So that, that's the will of God for us. That's absolutely the will of God for us. So let, let's move on. Okay, we have some very practical examples here. A very good example is... Uh, IBM invention of hard disk drive. You know, when when hard drive was invented, in it, I think it was invented in 1953, but the, officially it was announced in 1956. IBM called the first, you know, disk file. They called it IBM 355. It was actually meant to serve IBM 305. IBM 305 was a tarmac computer system of the time. The hard drive in those days was referred to as, you know, uh, 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 access storage system. You know, when we talk about access storage, that's what we call today secondary storage system. So now, the interesting thing is that the first disk file that was invented, this is going to interest you, was simply five megabytes. Five megabytes. Isn't that interesting? And tell me what was the weight, the mass, over a ton. You know, ship it all the way to, you know, uh, the IBM headquarter, you know, <laughs> And it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. You know, now you have how many gigabytes? IBM introduced, made the first gigabyte in 1980, I suppose. So, but it's, 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 it's amazing. 
what what then you have one giga i mean a several gigabyte in one small you know uh device like this it was massive it was my over a ton so then we we then see also the introduction of what is called electronic fund transfer you know where you move fund from one bank to another one bank from one city to another from one city to another which was actually introduced by new york city bank in 1981. new york city bank actually is a mother bank to Citibank of america is a mother bank to you know chase Manhattan, and uh, i think there's another bank you know uh there's all yes manufacturers and over you know so new york city bank was all that that we have the credit card system you know we have you know visa card we have the debit card also on that visa card and mastercard and all that all of that were you know invention that drives that sets in motion the world system let me give you another dynamic example very interesting is is that of uber I was reading about the Uber. It was in 2009. What was the name of the, you know, Uber was started by um, Travis Kanik. Kanik. Kanik, yes, Travis. Travis Kanik. And then uh, I think Gerard, Gerard Camp. Travis Kanik and Gerard Camp. They were in Paris. They waited and waited for a very long time. Endless time, just 2009, they waited and waited for a cab, a taxi. None was coming. They returned to America with the determination to solve a problem. May God give you such heart that, ah, then how come you, ah, ah, why can't we just stand like this and hit a harp, our harp, and a taxi appear? They started developing that. So that's what brought about Uber. So you can have your app and then, you know, uh, notify the system that you're in need of a drive, a drive, a ride. And then your vehicle come. Just, you don't have to go to the main road or travel any distance. And the interesting thing is that they have tens of thousands of taxis. I don't know how many all over the world without owning one. That's incredible. I, I think by, 2000 and, by 2016, the Uber was worth about $6.5 billion. So, of course, we also have companies who, are, who of course, we have, you know, individual enterprise that are, they are the one governing the world. They determine how people think. The like of Apple, I think Apple is the highest. Is what the highest Apple is worth about seven hundred and fifty-six billion dollars. You know that's Steve Jobs, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, you know Steve uh, Wilson, I, uh, uh, Ronald Wayne. Then we have Al Albert. Albert is the mother company of Google. It's worth five hundred and eighty-one billion dollar. Ari Page, Sergey Brin. Then we have Microsoft. Bill Gates, you know, $417 billion. Bill Gates, Paul Harlan. We have Facebook. Facebook is worth about $412 billion. Amazing. Just Facebook that all of us have fun on. That's what $414 billion. That's what some people, that's what some, some people, you know, just for creating and allowing us all to of social interactivity. Somebody is making huge money. Then we have Tesla. You know, Tesla is a uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk was a South American born Canadian American. Oh, this is beautiful. See, can you see the uh, disk? This is five megabyte. They're trying to they're trying to offload. That's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Elon, Elon Musk is uh, a, South, um, a South American Canadian, South American born Canadian America. He started Tesla. Tesla is worth about 45 billion. Tesla is a company, is an automaker. 
you know, uh, they're into energy storage system, solar panel manufacturing, and uh, Ryan Wright, Ryan Wright, a, a former Arsenal football player, is one of the co-founder of Tesla. Praise God. <laughs> No, oh, he's got goals. He won league. He won Premier League. Won not only for Arsenal. Played, you know, made his mark all over the world. He's a fantastic, you know, analyst today. He's one of the people that's always having headache. Arsenal gives him headache, a lot of headache when they're playing like the way they played last week against uh, Watford, you know, and, and all that. Now, but the point. This is where we're going. The world system became infiltrated. You know, why men slept. The pre Satan is known as a prince of this world. The prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 describes Satan as the prince of the power of the air. What he does is that he dispatches negative energy. He releases toxic energy air, toxic air, oxygen, that is, if infiltrate, it pollutes and corrupts the air and makes it unhealthy. That's the atmosphere. It makes it unhealthy. It sends negative energy. It does that to initiate activities that would defy human thought. And that's all it needs to do to actually collapse the world system. Once human thought is defiled, Thoughts are powerful. So if you can just, once, once you could, you know, if you can defy human thought, you have destroyed the system. You, if, if the systems become infiltrated with lawlessness. It is lawlessness that drives iniquity. It is lawlessness that drives perversion. It is lawlessness that drives callousness. You know, all, all the things that controls and govern the present world systems. So all that the prince of the air needs to do is to defile human thoughts. And that's exactly what the devil, you know, has done. That's why the Bible says the devil is, is being referred to as a god of this world. He manipulates human mind and then take advantage of the fallen nature of lust in man. And then the outcome is lawlessness. And then that's how iniquity, the present decadence we see all around us. That is where they actually emanate from. Praise God. So now, but the point is this. We have a responsibility. Let's want to say, we, I have a responsibility. As a church. Let me, let's read the scripture again. Can, if, if, if we can put it on the on the projector, that fun, okay, fantastic. John chapter seventeen. John seventeen. We'll take it from verse fourteen. And the Bible says, "I've given them thy word." The word of God is what prepares us. Is what equips us to actually make a difference in the world. Why it keeps also make the difference in the world? The word of God. The Bible says, I have given them thy word. And the world had hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. What, 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 what the word of God does is that the word of God instills in us our true sense of identity. Our sense of, our, our sense of allegiance to the kingdom of God. So then, then we realize that when we are built and equipped by the world, we will realize that we are not of the world. Now, when the Bible says we're not of the world, it's because the present world system has been taken over by another spirit. There's a spirit that governs, there's a spiritual, the spiritual atmosphere of the present world system. So, in order for us to redeem the world, we come with kingdom ideologies we come with kingdom with the, we come with 
kingdom content. We come with kingdom mandate. Praise God. That, so those with it, if you have those natural human beings who are only intelligent, who only have the natural knowledge, and you send them into the world system, have you really done the world system any good? Not exactly. They will make their they will contribute their quota, is that right? To develop the system naturally. But God's interest surpasses that, you understand? God's interest is to set a new standard. God's interest is to set a platform that will redeem, you know, the thoughts, the thinking, and the attitude and life of man. Praise God. So let's go back to that. To that scripture. So the Bible says, I have sent them into the world, even as I am, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 15, let's read it. The Bible says, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. Can you see the prayer that the Lord Jesus said he prayed for? He said, it's not pray that God should take us out of the world. You know, some people try to take themselves out of the world. They, come, they try to severe themselves out of the world. God, it is not the will of God that you should read the Bible 24-7. You know what I mean by that? Now, if it's possible to meditate on the world 24-7 and do all that things, that's the will of God. But it's not the will of God to lock yourself out of the world system. Cut yourself out of every human being and close up to one room to be reading the Bible in order to achieve what? To manifest to angels. Praise God. No. You see, that thought itself, it's erroneous. The idea of trying to keep away from the world so that we will be safe is erroneous. It's not the spirit of God. This is the, this is the kingdom ideal mentality. The kingdom mentality is that get equipped in the world. Once you get equipped in the world and you keep getting equipped in the world, Go into the world. Praise God. And make an impact. He said, the Lord Jesus said, I never pray that you keep them out of the world. But instead, I'm praying that you should keep them from, the, from, from evil. From desecration. Keep them from being perverted. Verse 16. Then he said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. But this is what does the tree. 17. Sanctify them by thy, by thy truth. Thy word is true. Praise God. Now, let me share a few principles with us. That will help highlight our rule out there in the world. How we can carry out our rule out there in the world. Now, the Lord Jesus made it very clear to us that we should go into the world. You know, that's what Mark 16, 15 says. He, go ye into the world, cosmos, and preach the gospel. But to go ye into the world. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, the Lord Jesus put it this way. He said, I am sending you into the means of wolves. Wolves are dangerous animals. Sending into the Matthew 10 16. I'm sending you into the means of wolves. But this is the trick. Make sure you're as wise as serpent. And make sure you're as gentle as dove. That's to say, never, never, never compromise your nature. Never compromise your nature. Your nature of humility. Your nature of tenderness. Art tenderness. Never compromise your nature. But at the same time, I want you to be discerning. I want you to be alert i want you to be smart god does not use naive people naive people can easily become victim praise god god wants us to be alert god wants us to be full of prudence you know serpents are regarded to be negative isn't that so but yet he said we should be as wise as serpent be as wise as serpent know how human beings think Understand how the world system run. But you apply the kingdom principles. Praise God. So that's what the Lord Jesus said. So now this is how we can achieve that. The first principle we have here is a principle of diligence 
and hard work. Let someone say diligence and hard work. Remember the Lord Jesus he was trying to be, they, they were trying to set him up. The, uh, uh, the Pharisees conspired with the Herodians and they asked him that to whom do you pay tax? Are you supposed to pay tax to Caesar? In Matthew chapter 22, you know, uh, if you look at verse 21 specifically, from verse 15 to 21, but Matthew 22, 21, the Lord Jesus said, if you give me a coin. He said, whose image do you have here? They said, Caesar. He said, period. Pay tax, what belongs to Caesar? To Caesar. What belongs to God? Some people take their, th their tight and chop them. Praise God. Some people will... Uh, uh, I feel tired. I can't pray. God understands. You don't take what belongs to God and give it to Caesar. I don't even know what I'm saying. There are too many people here who have, been, who have been given what belongs to God to Caesar. They go to work in the morning, go to work in the night. When they finish all that, they continue to work on the computer in the middle of the night. And it's all work, 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 work. The call of God, they've forgotten about it. The word of God, they've forgotten about it. The things of the spirit, they've forgotten about it. We need to go back to our foundation. We cannot redeem the world. We're not, we're not going into the world. We're not going into the world on our own. Stop going into the world at your, on your own account. We go into the world as sent once. Praise God. We go into the world to liberate the world, to liberate the system, to set a standard. We're going into the world to reverse the atmosphere that governs the world system. Praise God. So the Lord Jesus said, no, but listen to this. You don't give to God what belongs to Caesar. You hear what I say? You also do not give to God what belongs to Caesar. You see, some people are meant to be marketing for their companies. They are attending conferences. Christian conferences. You know what I mean? They are attending Bible school study and training centers. Attending, so it's, you know, in the morning. Someone told me that. that I'm, I'm, at, I'm so glad. I'm being drafted as a marketer in my company. It gives me opportunity to pursue God. He said, you pursue? He said, in the morning, I go for this meeting on Monday. On Tuesday, I go for this. On Wednesday, I said, they will sack you. <laughs> because you won't live up to your responsibility. You see, some people in their place of work, when they get to work, they open the Bible. Check them out at 12 noon. They open, they are reading the Bible. How do you become effective at your work? And you are being paid. We're supposed to be diligent at our work. You know, when we serve the system with diligence, we are actually serving Jehovah. That's why it says in his word in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 5 to 7. He said we should serve our master according to the flesh as unto the Lord. The problem is that some of us don't know how to serve the Lord. That's the problem. If you don't know how to serve the Lord, that's a fundamental problem. But if you serve the Lord with reverence, you don't handle the things of God like your own thing. Like where you, you know, you handle the things of God with care. You handle it with a sense of urgency of the now. Then the same spirit, God says the same spirit is what is a, the spirit of reverence, the spirit of urgency of the now, the spirit of thoroughness is what we take out there in the world and then it is called excellence. Praise God. So that's the first principle. The second principle is conviction. Without clear-cut conviction, we can't stand and be outstanding and be distinctive out there in the world. We have to be people with conviction. You see, the purpose of the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of Christ is meant to instill in us the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of Christ, the teaching ministry of the, that brings, that communicate the understanding of the word of God and the will of God to us, it's supposed to reinforce our conviction in the biblical principles. So in the face of pressure, in the face of compromise, we are actually equipped to stand. We can stand the pressure 
of out there in the system. Of course, because out there in the system, the spirit of the age is attempting to defy our heart. But with conviction in the things of the spirit, in the will of God, we can withstand it. Another thing is value system. Our va we must have a solid you know, kingdom value system. What that means is that, again, our exposure to the things of the spirit gives us an advantage. We are furnished with the values, godly values, justice, fairness. You do things with fairness. Truth doesn't change color when interest is concerned. Praise God. Fairness, justice, integrity, courtesy, consistency, commitment, honesty, all of that come to play because simply because the word of God is building up our inner man. That the fact that the word of God is building up our inner man simply means that we can actually stand tall when measured by the standard that actually assesses, that determines any the, the standard of judgment, the standard of truth by which you measure any decent society. Praise God. I think the second to the last thing is character capacity. Our character. Character deals with, our, I, I describe character in this sense as our spiritual stature or maturity or our human makeup in the image of Christ. Character is our human, human makeup in the image of Christ. Of course, character is built in us as we walk with God and submit to the dealing of God and go through the process of God. Character is built in us. Praise God. And what, that, what character enables, I mean, achieves in us is that it gives us capacities to shine in the midst of darkness. Where darkness is dominant, or darkness is, is, where darkness is tangible, without character, people fizzle out. But with character, you see, light rejoices in the midst of that. Light becomes radiant, more radiant in the midst of that. You're, you're really not going to appreciate some of this lamb during the day, but let it be in the dark. You're going to really appreciate it. So when there is character, we shine as light. And that's exactly what God, the mandate God has given us, that the Lord Jesus talked about in Matthew 5. He said, let your light so shine that men may see your good work and glorify the Father in heaven. When we have character, we can represent effectively God's kingdom interest. We can fulfill his purpose. When we have character, praise God. When, 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 when character is built in us, we can be used to establish God's righteousness in the earth. Hallelujah. Now let me tell us what character is not. Character is not our inability to, bl to blunder. Character is not an in our inability to blunder. Our inability to make mistakes. That's not character necessary. What character is, is that? that? What that means is that character is not about the fact that we don't make mistakes. We don't attain perfection overnight. But character is that we are sincere to recognize our error, our blunder once they are revealed. We are sincere to recognize them. We are sincere to take responsibility for them. Praise God. Character is not our ability to determine other people's action. To determine other people's view. That's not character. But instead, this character is an op is, 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 you know, standing in a place where we actually accommodate their view. And we give them opportunity to change. Praise God. Finally, what God expects of us, our, our responsibility as we go out there into the system, depending on the opportunity God provides for, for us, our responsibility is that of to stand as a prophet. We are meant to all be prophetic voices, prophetic channels by which God can actually intervene out there in the world systems. 
our spirituality and proximity to the mind of God put us in a position of advantage. Isn't that true? If you are spiritual, you are spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. Your spirituality doesn't allow you to hear from God. You don't see. You, the, when other people are confused, you are confused. When other people cannot see beyond the natural, you can see beyond the natural. We are subjected to every dilemma of this world without having a supernatural intervention to create the way out. Then what's the essence of, of your spirituality? A proximity with God, a proximity to the mind of God put us in an elevated position. Praise God. Where we can download revelation. Download visions and we use them to solve the complications out there in the world system. That's one of the things that people like Daniel, Joseph, Daniel in Babylon, Joseph in Egypt, they are advanced examples of how we ought to function as God's prophetic instrument out there in the world system. Praise God. So the essence of this is to, you know, expose us to, remind us of our responsibility and how we are supposed to make impact out there in the world system. We're not supposed to live at the mercy of whatever the devil brings, throws at us. Neither are we supposed to be indifferent and be bundukos. That we only read the Bible upside down. We don't read the Bible with a sense of practical application. We only read the Bible and think, the, you see, we're reverting to religiosity. We have the Bible, the word of God is life. The word of God is real. We are meant to be the God's intervention agency to bring the word of God to pass in the in the corporate and, and, you know, systemic world. That's our calling. That's our mandate. Praise God. Amen. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's been a lot of learning um, today, giving us more context for our daily engagement. Praise the Lord. Um, we're quickly going to take, um, please, if you have questions um, that you need answers to, just write them down or, you know, just get them ready. Um, in a couple of minutes from now, we're going to have a very short session of questions and answers. But right now, uh, we're going to take our tithe and our offering. If there is anybody paying tithe in the house, uh, please just come forward. Do we have um, tithers in the house? Good. And then while they're preparing to come forward, let's also uh, make ready our offering. Um, I'm sure during the collection, we're going to have um, Pastor Lamide minister to us in a song. Mama, please. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your children that are paying their tithes this morning, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the faithfulness and the heart that you have given them to remember to bring their tithes before you. Lord, we ask that you would bless their hearts in the name of Jesus. We know many people, oh God, are not able to be consistent in paying their tithes because of family pressures and problems and all that. But because despite their problems, despite the things that want to make them eat their tithes, they have come out to pay tithes. Lord, we ask that you would remember them for good. You would bless them and cause their storehouses to be full in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, let's ready our offering. Amen. Very quickly, I just want us to pray over our offering. Can we just worship the Lord? Um, just say something very nice to the Lord. 
Um, I just want us to love the Lord with our offering that we're giving. Just in case you don't even have anything to give, just express your heart to that. We're praying, church. Can we just pray over our offering and just offer it to the Lord with a heart of gratitude and worship? Lord, we thank you for this um, privilege you've, you've given to us to, again, just love you. Just, just sh- show gratitude and show, show that um, we're loyal and, and that we, we, we just want to offer again what comes from our wallet and what comes from our pockets, knowing fully well that you have given to us these resources. We thank you, Jesus. Let it come to you as a sweet-smelling savour in Jesus' name. Amen. Spread out the skies over empty space. Said, Let there be light to a dark and formless world. Your life was born. You spread out your arms over empty hearts. Said, Let there be light. To a dark and hopeless world, your son was born. She made the world and saw that it was good. You sent your only son for you are good. What a wonderful maker. What a wonderful Savior How majestic your whisper How humble your love With a strength like no other In the heart of a Father Majestic your whispers, oh God, what a wonderful God. No eye has fully seen how beautiful the cross, and we have only heard the faintest whispers of how great you are. You made the world that saw that it was good. You sent your only son for you are good. Oh, what a wonderful maker. What a wonderful savior. How majestic your will. Oh God, how humble your love With a strength like no other In the heart of a father Oh my, how majestic your whisper Oh God what a wonderful God. You made the world as so that it was good. You sent your only son for you are good. Oh, what a wonderful maker. Yeah. 
What a wonderful Savior Oh God How majestic Your whisper Oh I'll humble your love With a strength like no other yeah. In the heart of a father Oh, oh, oh yeah. How much just in your whispers Oh, God yeah. hey, uh, You're a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, Wonderful God Hey, uh, how majestic uh, God, hey, hey, how much this thing in your quietness, hey, hey, God, you're wonderful, 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 what a wonderful God, with a strength like no other, with a strength like no other, I am the heart. Father, yeah, 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 how much has taken your with her, oh God, we declare, so wonderful God, hey, what a wonderful maker, oh God, what a wonderful Savior. Testing your whisper. What a wonderful God. How much testing your whispers, oh God. Oh, what a wonderful God. How much testing your whisper, your whisper. Your whispers, God, what a wonderful God. Thank you, Pastor Lamidi. That was to minister that song. <laughs> Praise God. You know, and it just, um, I think it was the ministration of song of my own talk. He made the word and said it was good. It's a wonderful maker. Praise God. But it's so exciting to realize that God created the world system. Amen. But unfortunately, it's, it's perverted today. And it's a loss of the flesh, loss of the highs and pride of life that runs it. But God is redeeming it. Amen. And that's why he's sending us there. It's dark today, it's darkness, but the light of the, the light of God's kingdom will shine forth. Hallelujah. So we're gonna take a few questions. I learned they've gone for small chops, and maybe maybe we'll have ended by the time small chops because don't worry, I'm going to devour everything. <laughs> Praise God. Because we have two more things to do. We'll do question and answer. I, I, I feel a lot has been taken care of. We may not have so much so many questions. And uh, the last thing we're doing, hmm, there are some interesting, very special people who just landed from the moon. So we're going to receive them officially. Praise God. So do we have any question? Any question? Maybe something you want to be clarified or something you want to, you know. Okay, we have Sister Fumi. L let me say this, something when Sister Ankem was talking. You see, there's something when Sister Ankem. You know, there... The, Oh, Caroline, you're doing the she in your head. When you talk about mouth odor, there's some, some, you know, some people do have very strong mouth odor. Even if they brush like seven times a day. It's, it's, it's sometimes we go through one challenge or another, you know, but we need to seek how to solve our own problem. So, so sometimes, that, that, uh, we, I brush, I brush, I brush morning, at least in the morning and in the night. And a lot of times I do brush in between. 
but definitely for, when I wake up in the morning and before I do go to bed, I do I brush at least twice a day. I take my bath at least twice a day, at least twice a day. But the truth is, that often I take my bath three, four, five times. I say, ah, ah, what are you bathing? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I like bathing. You can't believe it. One of the things I do when we travel on holiday is I bathe. <laughs> I could be in the bathroom. If the bathroom is so nice, yay, I could be there for one hour and more. I will just, oh, you can't believe it. What, what could be somebody's hobby? Maybe that's my hobby. Maybe <laughs> I like to bathe just, oh, in, 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 during winter self. I went to our winter bun. I bathed out of all the protective oil. <laughs> so, you know. Now, at least twice a day in the morning and before you go to bed, you feel fresh. I, I, tell you, I, I can't stand it, you know, and, and all that. Now, mouth odor, that some people, it's actually like a condition. They've, it's coming from inside. Sometimes we need to detoxify. We need to detoxify, you know, stay on water, when we take a lot of water, it flushes out toxic. It flushes a lot of toxin on the inside. When we take a lot of water, it, sometimes you need to, like we said, you need probably need to detoxify, take some liquid, take some sardine stuff, stay off food, you know, and, you know, fruits, veg, and all that. So, so you now realize that you start having fresher breath coming out from the inside. So sometimes... It's not just the mouth. It's actually coming from the inside. So sometimes we need to detoxify. You know, that is like sometimes when you feel a little bit tired and, and sick, there's a taste bud that, that is uh, bitter, you know, and then there's a smell that comes you know, and all that. So we need some bacteria that are feasting on the inside. <laughs> so that's about that. We should always be clean. Though. Let me tell you a revelation is a revelation. Sometimes when people drive in my car, and I just say, please let's wind down to take fresh air. <laughs> Someone is spending. <laughs> I say, please let's wind down to take fresh air. Fresh air is good. Actually, somebody I'm choke, I'm choking. So that's that's it. That's it. <laughs> Praise God. So let's take our question. This is for me. <laughs> The microphone, a microphone isn't working. <laughs> now it's going to work. <laughs> okay. When the uh, Hello. Okay, I want more. I want a clarification or maybe a wider scope of ambition. Because I have a practical example. Fine, you know, as he explained to us, that it's like a, it could be a passion even while you are growing up and it grows up. So I want to know at what point do you, because I know it still needs to be guided and it needs to be, uh, I mean, it needs to be, even though it's an ambition that grows up with you, some comes like that. No, I, I feel it seems to be guided, tailored. For example, I, I know somebody that he usually tells us that from childhood, he has always, he has always had a strong passion for music. And he knows that music, you know, he grows up 
even though he went to school and all that, but he has always been looking for a right way to come out. But along the way, because somehow we were somehow close with the person, I knew that it was going... He was doing it because he was ambitious and he wanted to, like, launch out and, you know, maybe start something and all that. But we knew that now it was not right. When we tried to calm him down, we would say it, we don't understand. This is something that has been boiling in him since he was small. And he has written a lot of songs even while he was growing up in school and, and all that. Because I feel there are a lot of other things that need to be put in perspective like mentoring, like even character. There are a lot of things. So I just felt maybe he didn't mention such as so that we can balance it because we can have so much ambition, so much whatever. But how do you tailor it to God's will at the end of the day? Praise God. Thank you for that question. Now, I will, I would like to focus on the example Sister Fumi gave. I have a passion or I discovered a talent or a gifting. Sometimes a passion, you know, is born out of a talent, out of gifting, out of ability to do something. Sometimes it's a love for something. You, know, you can love music in terms of consumption of it, but that's not talent. You know, you love to listen to music. You know everything in and out, in and out of about music, but not that you like to do it. Um, but this time around, you just to like to either produce it or perform it. Now, that's a talent. That's it's also a passion. Now, the ambition Pastor Sheyi is talking about is the principle of desire to be the best at it. What that will mean is that, you see, if what I want is to stand on the stage and everybody, you understand, it could even be a calling, you understand. When we say natural talent, is that it could even be a spiritual calling. But what I'm, I want is to stand on the stage, is to preach, is to go all over the place, all the attention on me. You see, that's ambition. But it's not the ambition Pastor she is talking about. That, that, the one you talk, the, that example is an example of, in quote, negative ambition. You know, when negative ambition is concerned, you know, that's when I'm not willing to pay the price for mentorship. I'm not willing to even pay the price of constraint. I'm not willing to pay the price. I'm not willing to submit my passion to scrutiny. You know, I'm getting God out of it. That is the, the ambition he explained when you get to a point of dilemma. You know, where you want to do it your own way. You want, it might even not be a calling in that sense, it might be something natural. But you don't want to follow God's order. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It might be something natural. But it might even be football, soccer. But you are being restrained by maybe authority God put in your life, by parents or the nudge of the spirit. But you are not willing. You just want to come out quickly. That's ambition. That is ambition from the spiritual, let me use the word spiritual, from the angle of negativity. But the ambition Pastor Shei is talking about is the desire to excel at it. And that desire is not until when you get to a stage or where you produce music in your name. In fact, it may lead you not to produce anything in your name. It may lead you to submit that passion to somebody. It may lead you to submit, to use that passion to affect only two people's life for a very long time. But the interesting thing is that the desire to be the best at it. You wake up in the middle of the night and walk at it. You will go extra mile. You will buy material. You will read. 
You will do voice training. You will do all of that. And, you know, when God places demand, you will not hesitate. So, that, uh, the example you gave is not the application of the principle, what is called an ambition. What you use the word ambition. Ambition is a, an English word. You use dictionary to explain it. But the only thing is that it's a conflicting, there, there is a blockade in our own mind. Because oftentimes, we proclaim the kingdom and we often confront excesses of human nature and tendency. That is where our own use of the, regular use of the word ambition comes in. It's actually the word the scripture calls the pride of life. The pride of life is the, our own often regarded ambition. So that is the one. You see that fellow you're talking about, you put in that description, pride of life is what is driving the person. But whereas, you see, if you use that gift to minister to the brethren, you use that gift, you submit it to scrutiny, you submit it to process, actually, you are following God's order. And it's actually achieving the desire to be the best at it. I, I don't know if that, that, that clarifies it. You know, so that, that, so I'm happy about it. Any other question? I saw some hands. Okay, then. Yes, you said something about um, when, okay, being, serving excellently, serving your employer excellently, I see that it's totally true. I totally accept and I'm convinced about that. But what of an instance where it looks like your employer is making excessive, excessive demands from you that is strip, stripping you of the time you have, you know, for meetings with brethren and you know, normal activities that will help build your faith. What do you do in such an instance? Okay, that's the balance to uh, serving uh, uh, our employer or, you know, uh, as unto the Lord. The balance is this. Unfortunately, especially in our own Nigeria, in our culture, our environment is such that sometimes when you're employed and they tell you that, okay, this employment, you're going to be working from 8 o'clock to 5 or 4 p.m., then they are still working till 9 p.m. <laughs> it is very unfortunate. It's extortion. In an organized system, once it is 4 p.m., you are done. Or 5 p.m., whichever one is in your employment letter, you are done. If they then want you extra, it's a different arrangement. And they really pay you good, maybe per hour. But in our own, it's like eternity. We, you know, we don't, there's no, it's unfortunate. We're being taken advantage of. And that is not right. That's not fair. That's part of the things that government need to address. And if you see people who work with, maybe in, in multinational organization, or maybe particularly foreign you know, organization owned by, you know, uh, particularly Western one. I don't mean Indians. They are worse than also Indians or uh, Pakistani. You will work your, they work, there's no closing time. <laughs> so so if, if you look at the, you know, you work and you are back home to take care of your family. You can't be the best. What they don't know is that a distracted man cannot give the best. You can't be productive. When you're like, ah, my son, oh, what I said I would give him for, you know, I've not paid his school fees, oh, I've not, you're thinking, oh, my family, this thing, I'm for, you can't give your best. But you give your best when you're fresh. You know, when uh, Pastor Monica, before we got married, she was working with a German company. One time I was in Abuja, I have to visit her, and the boss just said, just because, Monica, you aren't looking good. They're country represented. No, no, you aren't. No, come on, shut down the system. Out, out you go, out you go. And this was like maybe like 11 a.m. Yeah, do that, does that happen? Like, yeah. and then, <laughs> until, until you are dead. You are almost dead. But 
But amazingly, you can actually, you can give your best when you are under pressure. It's unfortunate. So it's part of the ab abnormalities that we, we have to deal with in our, in our society. Praise God. You know, and the point is that sometimes when you don't have an energy job, what do you do? You just, you just, we just trust God things will get right in our, in our society. Adiola. Where's the microphone? Okay. There was a place he said, um, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, give to God what belongs to God. And you uttered a statement that you don't give to God what belongs to Caesar. And then I remembered when we were in school then, it was normal for us to start lectures. I have you know, diet in the house, Yanu Jabi. It was just normal, especially as there's schools and everything. Nobody wants to see you go to class and there's church. And we felt we were doing God a favor. That was, sincerely, that was it. We started lectures a lot. And God helped us. We didn't spill, but some of us spilled. So how do you now balance it? Maybe for those that are still in school or for, I don't know, how do you balance it? Like when you should go to church, go to church. When you should go to school, go to school. How do I give to God what is not Caesar? How do I give to Caesar what is not God? Thank you very much. That's Brilliant. That just suits the occasion. And the answer is in the question. If, you, if I'm in leadership, no, no, what you're saying is that you are in leadership, an executive member of a fellowship, and they fix a fellowship for 12 noon when there is lecture, or 9 a.m. So now it's good to be clear from onset. Otherwise, take away your chieftaincy title. <laughs> My Oh, and they make you feel as if you are not spiritual. But not, you don't have faith. You faked it. You faked stabbing lecture. <laughs> now, the point is this. Amazingly, they are not spiritual. They are being carnal. Amazingly. They are being carnal. That's lack of maturity, lack of control. They could have fixed the meeting for a time that is off lecture. You now pack meeting back to back. So every time there is <laughs> lecture. No. No, you, so you let them know that it's on, you know, but sometimes it's not, it's not, it's not like the spirit of error. It's erroneous. Sometimes it's not spirit of, it's overzealousness. I just say that you just want to serve God. You just want to, you know, Jesus is coming back anytime from now. You know, you just want to just put in, it's just overzealousness, you know, and all that. So the, the point is that when people fail, God is not glorified. So, so the point, and it's so beautiful. You know, all the executive men that flying color, they all pass. That that brings glory to God. So, so the point is, yeah, I understand. There are instances our responsibility will have us put to go extra mile, but it's okay for responsibility to take to take away a bit of sleep from us. You understand? It take it's okay for it's responsibility to take away some of our social life from us, but it's not okay for responsibility uh, of, you know, in terms of service to take away our lecture time from us. So we, ha we have to be blunt. I'm sorry. My spirituality means I give, I show excellence and responsibility to my academics. So I'm very sorry. And if by that you are disqualified from executive, and that, that, I think that's laudable, and that, that's okay. And you could be used to influence the system, you know, and all that. So it's very, very important. We don't, we shouldn't succumb to that. We should. It's called balance. We should be balanced. Praise God. I just have a testimony. Um, the first question that he asked about workplace. When I was working in the bank, I had the Muslim uh, head of department. And she was a real Elijah, a real full Muslim. And they now transferred our branch to Magodo. So I have to leave the office on Wednesday by 4. I was wondering, how will I tell this woman that I want to go somewhere? If she asks me where, I can't lie. So I will say fellowship. She will not say, you know, I was just thinking. And the Holy Spirit just said, just pray and believe and have faith, you know. And so I just prayed about it that. God, let me find favor with this woman. So 
the day before I worked late till around 9.30. He said, Benga, go home now, go home. <laughs> you know, I, and I said, no, no, I let me walk. So the next day, <laughs> the next day I just went to her. And I said, Elijah, and I said, hey, what's it, Benga? I said, I want to be going somewhere on Wednesdays. Please, can I close at 4 o'clock? He now looked at me. He said, 4. I said, yes, ma, is it too early? He said, okay, no problem. You know, and she gave me permission. So the first day, when it was 4, I didn't go anywhere. When it was now 5, she said, Benga, are you not going again at 4? And I said, ah, okay. <laughs> and I went. So that's how every time I used to, I used to then, when I feel that there's work pressure, I won't say anything. I'll wait for her to say, ah, you're not going, is it not today, Wednesday? Then I'll go. So we have to use wisdom, that's what I'm saying. Mm. That is maturity. You know where it started from? Uh, after, you know, it started with prayer. Faith. That is the real faith. Not the one that I don't care. They to whatever you they will sack you. <laughs> and unfortunately, they will sack you for negligence. So the point is that you know you pray and trust God. Then the next thing, look at the wisdom. You know, Pastor Kanye said he stayed, he stayed on that the 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 boss the thing to, why, what you go home, you know, that's registering an impression. So, by the time the next day, it's the, the last thing on our mind is that you are the fellow that gives extra, you know, uh, you, you go extra mile, you, you put in extra. So, and then with the favor of God, she granted it. And he didn't go. He didn't take it like that. He allowed her. Uh, you know, it's better for us to say, ah, uh, won't you go? Can't you see that he's already passed for? That's so beautiful. Wisdom. So, you know, we just have to trust God for wisdom. That's what the Bible actually meant by be as wise as serpent. When we go out there into the system, which is, it takes the wisdom of God. Praise God. Okay. Shall we take two more questions? Two more questions if, if we do have. Oh, amazing. I'm happy. So a lot of our concerns have been taken care of. Amen. So I think the last thing we have to do is thanksgiving. Praise God. I see we're so busy now. <laughs> so anyway, it's not my take. It's only the honeymooners. They are very close to heaven. They are the ones that will be raptured if rapture takes place. If people know it's food, <laughs> you're concerned about it. <laughs> Amen. I've really, really, really been blessed. I've been so blessed. Thank you very much, all the resource persons, the speakers, everyone, all the questions and all that. I really And the question Diola asked is a very powerful question because that question... It makes them, it's just like what uh, Sister Fumi also asked, because a lot of times for those of us who were seeking them, I remember we're so zealous when we just first started hearing this message of the kingdom that one of our leaders, <laughs> you know, just kept saying that we're not pushing enough. We're not pushing enough. We're not pushing enough. And if we're pushing enough, we'll just hit immortality now. Immortality, immortality, eternal life will break forth into the consummation of eternal life. I said, eh, hey, okay. So I now had to ask him a question. I said, excuse me, sir. Are you saying that, he said we should set a date we'll hit immortality. I said, okay, are you saying, sir, that if we fix 28th of August that year, we were like in March, and press very seriously, we'll break forth into the consummation of eternal life. He said, yes. I said, eh? I said, where's the God factor in this thing? Now? Are we the one that determine 
you know, yes, there's that part where we can push, we can pay the price and do that, but are we supposed to decide that on the 28th of December this year now? <laughs> you know, so, and also I can understand, and it's the same thing when we hear things about ambition, when we hear things that we must have zero ambition and all that, and then you are now hearing um, things about ambition, it becomes very troubling that, ah, what is ambition here again? Ambition connotes negative, you know, um, negativity in our minds as kingdom pursuers and all that, you know, but... Um, like uh, Pastor Shea was talking, it's all within ambition that flows within the body, within the framework of the will of God. There's nothing as beautiful as that. When God wakes you up, because it's that ambition that makes you, you wake up in the morning and you cry and you pray for souls, you pray for open heavens, that the kingdom of God will find penetration in the earth. It is that ambition, whatever you, know, you call it, or that strong drive and desire. Most of us don't have it. You know, and so we just wake up normally like every other believer. The things that are troubling God in his heart are not troubling us because there's no drive, you know, there's no strong passion and desire to see the will of God entrenched. And like, um, like I also said, Diola, that was beautiful because a lot of young people, you know, you have to, if you are pursuing eternal life and you are pursuing kingdom, please, you have to give preference to kingdom, which is true. But that's not to say that your business should suffer. You wake up in the morning, the holy, you stay back in your house. Imagine you're running your own business. You're not working with someone. And then you wake up in the morning, you just want to pursue the kingdom, pray all through, read the Bible all through. Clients are calling you. People give you a job to do, and you have deadlines. You can't meet it. Everybody, Nobody will use you again now. So the kingdom would have failed. Amen. Because that money, we need it. I like money matters. We need that money. Amen. All right. Oh, hmm. Um, they said I missed Ijebo, the Ijebo's own. It is well. They prayed. Bukola prayed. But I think, no, they said Pastor didn't do badly. That was very good. He represented me very well. I'm training him well. I'm training him really, really well. You know, because Buki just ran away completely from me. But I saw all the signs, everything, the movement changed. When you get married, your movement changes. <laughs> you begin to enjoy some exclusive things. But this morning, we are celebrating Ayo and doing. I need you people. They are the only people that are looking different from us. Every one of us came casual, straight from the moon. They are fresh, you know, and they are dressed in heavenly attires. Amen. So can we have Ayo? Ah, don't you want the matter now? You want me to kneel down? You're posing for Ayo. Please go 